In this video, we're going to be talking about why you should not become a digital marketing data analyst. That's right. We're going to give you reasons not to do this rather than reasons you should do this. Now, first and foremost, why am I doing this and what is a digital marketing data analyst? So first off, a digital marketing data analyst is not the same thing as a data analyst. It is a certain subset of a data analyst that doesn't require as much programming and code knowledge and is more related to being a master of using various marketing and analytics tools to pull and track the data you want and then visualize it and build reports to deliver insights about analytics to leaderships and stakeholders. That's the job I have right now, so that's what I can speak on. And the reason why I'm doing why you shouldn't do this is because I've done a bunch of videos on why it is a great thing and it is a great fit and the benefits of it, but it's important to acknowledge the flip side because there's billions of people on this earth and not everyone is a fit for this job title. So if you're considering it, maybe these are some signs to see if this is really a fit for you so that you don't waste your time dedicating resources or education to this only to find that it isn't something that you have the potential of doing or something that you have the right personality type or skill set to do. Now, while I do think that if you really commit to it and you really have a decent level of intelligence. Anyone can do this job and do well, make a good living, and then enjoy and work a remote job without a degree in this field. There are three things I cover today that will really help you understand if this is a job fit for you. And by the end of this video, you'll be able to know, hey, this is really a job fit for me, or hey, this isn't because I'm hitting some of these three things. So the first thing is, without a doubt, can you commit to and can you actually learn the technical skills required for this job within a reasonable time period? Having been on the hiring side of the table, on the other side of the job interviewer process and interviewed candidates for this job uh, before I got this job and have seen candidates and people come and go, I would say that one key, probably the most key thing is do you have the actual technical skills to get this job done? And slash or can you commit to and actually achieve these skills within a reasonable time period? So, you know, obviously before you have the job, you have longer to get those skills. But, you know, I think you really can get there within like six months or less if you really commit to it. And then when you have the job, you do get some on job training if you don't have certain skills sometimes. But there's a time limit to that, you know, an employer or a company can only really be so patient before you actually learn these skills. And if you can't, then that may be a sign that, you know, you're procrastinating because you really don't enjoy these things. Or for some reason, you know, technically, it's just not something that works well with your brain and you just can't figure it out because you're not really that data driven. You Maybe you're more artistic or something like that and you just can't really learn these skills. So. I don't think these skills are like rocket science or anything too complex, but it does definitely prefer someone who's a bit more technically minded and they can get a bit complex. Now, I've mentioned in my previous video what some of these skills are, so let me just repeat them here. So some of the big ones include a web analytics tool like Google Analytics 4, which is a very popular common one, and really knowing the ins and outs of said tool. And then a tool for setting up custom tracking and tag management needs for various web and marketing tools on your website. So a very common one for this is something like uh, Google Tag Manager. Personally, as you can tell, I like to stay in the Google suite. And then last but not least, you probably need some level of programming language. You don't have to be an expert, a basic intermediate to beginner level where you can actually apply and use it is more than good enough. And the language of choice that I would start with is SQL, otherwise known as SQL, which is um, fairly easy to learn if you really commit your time to it. There's free and paid tutorials online that are fairly affordable. And then of course, uh, I have to add one more thing, which would be some type of data visualization tool. I would start, but I would not end with Google Looker Studio. That is a very beginner friendly kind of uh, hit the ground running type of tool that you can really get up to speed on fairly quickly uh, But then you probably want to transition to something that's more advanced 
and that could be something like a Tableau or Power BI. And these are all things that I think anyone can really apply themselves and learn. And the best way of doing that is typically through, you know, taking the courses, taking the free resources and tutorials online, especially with something like Google Tag Manager. There's so many free articles and YouTube videos, but then applying that to real world stuff, such as a uh, real client, a real website, a real business. That way you really understand the ins and outs of the tools. If you're just playing in theory land um, and just using the tutorials, I think that's where people screw up and they think they know the tool, but it's all kind of hypothetical. And then they don't really know the tool when the employer screens them. And that's the real problem. For example, with something like Google Tag Manager, you may know the theory about how a tag works and how a trigger works. But then like when you actually have to set something up, then you have to know about variables and preview mode to be able to test those things and know when it breaks and then be able to diagnose that through preview mode and then figure out how you have to tweak the trigger to make that tag work. So I really think that having real world experience, either through working for free or interning or working at an entry level agency job is a really good way of getting your foot in the door or freelancing, or you know, if you really can't do any of those things, just you know, work on your own site, work on your friends' sites, something that actually gets you working and, and, and trying those things out. So I think that's really important, and unfortunately, I think that's really where I see a lot of people fall out, where they think it's a good fit, but it's not. You know, you, you're spending tons of time, and they still don't really understand how Google Analytics 4 works, or the basics of it, or something like that. And typically, I, I don't know for sure why that is, but sometimes it just comes down to, you know, not really feeling that they want to learn because it's uh, not something they really enjoy or are curious enough about or able to commit for whatever reason. I mean, I wouldn't say you really have to enjoy it, but at some level, you have to commit to really learning and dedicating yourself to knowing the ins and outs. And sometimes that requires doing work and, and self-learning outside of your nine to five job to get up to speed. And some people just aren't willing to do that. And then the other piece is really fully understanding the tool. And unfortunately, some people just, you, you give them what they can, but they just still are unable to do that. And that's what employers really want at the end of the day. If they want you to do a job and you can't do it, uh, then they can only give you so much slack. They may give you a, a, a few weeks to really learn the tool and then give you a second chance, but if you can't do the job at hand, then why are they paying you all this money? So just keep that in mind, um, and that will be the first sign. The second one is, can you have a decent level of communication and uh, emotional intelligence, and be able to at least uh, learn that if you don't have that, to be able to deliver some of this stuff? So some people I think are, they're, they're very technically gifted or skilled, but then, they forget to realize that you still have to present and deliver this and communicate this with real people. Usually it's leadership and they are not as granular as you when it comes to the technical skills. So what ends up happening is then they, they speak in all this technical jargon without realizing it and they're unable to really uh, persuade and sell and understand and and emphasize why their work is valuable and explain it in words that aren't filled with technical jargon because Believe me, there's tons of things in digital marketing, web analytics that are acronyms or technical terms. And then at the end of the day, they don't really see the value because you're not good at communicating, presenting and framing it and saying it in easily digestible ways. You know the subreddit, explain like I'm five. That's the kind of idea you wanna give. And that's not belittling this leadership and saying that they're five. Uh, you can explain like they're 15 or 18, but the point is, they're not really in the technical weeds of the numbers. So for example, if you're saying stuff like click-through rate and you know cost per conversion and then this went up and then the bounce rate went down and you just leave it like that, they don't really care. So having certain skills like storytelling ability or being able to develop those skills and understand their importance is another part of the skill. I think a lot of people emphasize the technical and data-driven part of this job, but they forget this, the people part of the job that really takes you to that S-class, that higher level of being good at this job. And then the last thing I wanna 
talk about. The third thing that may uh, indicate this is a not a good fit for you is can you hit deadlines? Deadlines for the work you are expected to deliver. Deadlines for learning certain new skill sets so that you can apply them on a job. This job and all the skills involved are constantly changing. There are new tag management systems and web analytics systems coming out all the time. Google Analytics 4, while it was the dominant player in certain industries like healthcare, it's no longer the dominant web analytics tool, for example, because they have all these privacy rules and laws that Google is not willing to abide by. So there are new players coming into the field like Mixpanel, Amplitude, Heap, and a lot more. Uh, and the question is, can you actually get in there and, you know, whatever this new tool is for even for mobile apps, there's different mobile analytics tools now like Braze, B-R-A-Z-E and Apps Flyer. And the question is, can you learn these tools? Can you get experience with these tools? And can you, you know, do that within a deadline? You don't have an indefinite amount of time to learn these tools and you have to be someone who's constantly be willing and able to learn and take ownership and uh, just be very nimble. And unfortunately, some people aren't really willing to be there and be able to do that and pivot. And so if you're someone who's just very stuck in their ways or just prefer just learning something once, like, um, you know, a fry cook or a, a house cleaner and then never having to learn anything again and just repeating the same task, for years and years, decades, and uh, you're not used to just sometimes having to relearn a brand new portion of your job, sometimes up to 30% of your job within the next two or three months because of how the industry shifted, you may not be able to keep up with a job like this. And for some people, they actually really like that because they would get really bored of doing the same task over and over because they don't feel like they're growing and if they don't feel like they're growing they're not growing their income they're not growing their life and so um, they don't want to be bored so for some it would work for them but for others who think that you know hey I could just get into this digital field and then just learn these tools and I'll be set for the rest of my life unfortunately that is not how this world works um, change is maybe the only constant so um, the good news is that once you learn a category of each of those tools I mentioned, that when you do shift into a new tool, I would say a good majority of that knowledge and those principles remain the same. Although the interface, the user interface may be much different, certain principles may have changed. It's not like you're relearning it really completely from scratch. So those are the three signs that this may not be a job fit for you. And once again, this is not for specifically just a data analyst. It's for a subset of data, data analysts called digital marketing analysts. They're also called analytics engineers, analytics solution engineers, or digital analysts. There's different terms for this job since it's such a new job. And hopefully you found this video valuable. If you did, leave it a like and leave a comment with any questions or ideas for future video topics you think I should cover. And I will certainly get to do that and do that for you and hit the subscribe button and then join my free email newsletter down below where I give exclusive tips on how you can get started to get the skills you want and get a job in this working remote even if you don't have a degree in this field.